there about um, modules we use on most of the sites that we build. So um, we're also going to cover just evaluating like what good modules are, how like based on the project page and other indicators, um, you can try to figure out if you want to use a module. And uh, we'll briefly cover some of the features in these modules. And at the end, we'll have a few minutes for questions, which hopefully you guys will have. Um, so the first thing is, obviously, if you're going to build a Drupal site, like you're going to need modules. Like Drupal Core does a very base level functionality, but if you want to do anything complex, you're pretty much going to have to extend it. So um, the first thing to know is you need some modules. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, you really need some modules. It would be a fool to build a Drupal site with no uh, contributed modules. Um, so the first thing is how to choose good modules. Um, the number one resource is probably drupal.org slash project slash usage. Um, that's a great indicator. It'll tell you how many installs various modules, uh, or various contributed modules have. Um, so that's, that's fantastic just because you can see what other people are using. And if there's 40,000 people using a module, chances are when the next version of Drupal comes along, you're not just going to be abandoned and, and have no upgrade path. Um, the next is uh, groups.drupal.org slash similar module review. Um, this actually used to be called the Duplicated Modules Hall of Shame, I believe. And uh, because that wasn't very friendly, it was renamed to the Similar Module Review. And what that'll do is take modules. Um, a good example is like the Lightbox style modules. There's like eight to 10 of them out there. And it'll, uh, there's a grid on this, uh, in this group that basically shows you what the various features that module support are and uh, which one you know, each uh, has. So just at a glance, you can kind of get a feature overview of that. Um, do you want to cover this one? Because I actually don't use this one. So <laughs> that's, that's your line. Yeah. So the, the Drupal dashboard is a site that I, when I run. I, I keep track of every single module that's released through Drupal, either new modules or recent releases of existing modules, and then filter them down to just the ones that I feel are the most important. So you can subscribe to a feed on the Drupal dashboard to see you know, which modules are most important or which modules are getting frequent updates uh, in a filtered way so you don't have to try to watch the you know, 30 new items that are released every day. Awesome. Um, the next is uh, checking out the issue queue. Um, it's great if you're wondering about a module just to look at the issue queue and especially pay attention to issues marked as critical. Um, I mean, there are bugs in almost everything, so just the absent or the, the fact that there's a bug in a module doesn't necessarily exclude it, but if you see a module that has 50 critical issues open, you probably don't want to install that on your site. Um, and then the maintainer is also important. Um, a lot of people don't pay attention to it at all, but on the project page, um, you can actually get a listing of all the containers for a specific module. And if you start paying attention to that over time, you're going to see trends like people who are contributing a lot of modules who are doing a lot of work. And there's definitely a set of people who are very trustworthy of what they're doing, and uh, that's an important resource. Um, maintainers, obviously, if you have 10 people working on a module and they're all actively maintaining it, that's going to be better than one person working in isolation in general. Um, you can ask friends. We are actually on IRC pretty much every weekday. Um, there's at least 10 to 15 of us in the Drupal Colorado IRC channel. And uh, we talk back and forth a lot about this kind of stuff. Like, hey, I just found this module. Has anybody else used it? What was your experience with it? Um, it's, uh, it's really useful just to be able to get that instant feedback from people who trust so, um, Industry friends, groups.drupal.org is a great resource. There are groups around just about anything um, that you would want to do. So, as, uh, as Greg put in the slide, there is a library group which is centered around Drupal and libraries. Um, there are groups for um, uh, learning management systems. There are groups for, I don't know if you have a comment on this, Greg. Uh, e commerce group. About any industry. There's a, a newspapers on Drupal, um, any, any industry you can think of for the most part. The group exists, and one of the first things that people do when they get together in the groups is, is come up with a list of modules that they recommend. So you can you know, <coughs> find that a wiki page with that kind of information. And 
another thing that's useful is uh, coding style. Um, I mean, whether you're using spaces or tabs isn't necessarily the definitive uh, definition of code quality by any stretch of the imagination. But if somebody's read the coding style guide and is paying attention to that, I think it's a safe assumption that they may have looked at the security guidelines as well and, and they're paying attention to things like that. Um, it, I would put this probably last is useful, but um, I think a lot of the other ones are more useful. So uh, This is actually a screenshot of the uh, project usage. So you see a lot of uh, a lot of modules in here that people are using. I mean, obviously these are the most used modules in Drupal. And just off the top, I mean, off of this list alone, like views, <coughs> token, path auto, um, file field, date, web form, like those are modules that people are going to be using in, I would say, most of the sites that they're building. Um, there are a couple in here that I would still say don't <coughs> use, <laughs> unfortunately, like image. Um, I, I don't personally like the model very much. But. And you can, one thing that's kind of interesting looking at this is that if you compare the line for the image module, uh, you can see the growth of it. This, these are weekly numbers. You can see the growth of the image module and then compare that to the growth of the image field module and see that image field has uh, much more rapid growth than the image module does. So you, you, you know, there's a lot of different data that you can get out of this report beyond just how popular is it. Is it increasing in usage? Is it falling off? Are people moving away to something else? I mean, what's, what's going on with that? Great point. And here are a few of the 